Good evening, everyone, and again, welcome to Pearlside Church. My name is Russell Tolentino. I'm a college and young adults pastor, and I just want to say it is an absolute honor to be able to share God's Word with every single one of us uh, tonight. And if you're tuning in for the first time, we want to especially welcome you, and uh, we hope that you'll continue on in your journey of faith with us at Pearlside Church. And we're definitely excited to see one another when we open up our services in a couple weeks, but right now, We are online, and I know that God is going to speak to every single one of us tonight with his word, myself included. And right now, we are in week two of a series called Onward. And what we are looking in throughout this series is how we can move on in our faith because of the grace of God, despite whatever may come our way while we're here on earth. And specifically tonight, we are going to be talking about the importance of being anchored in Christ. And we're going to talk about current events a little bit later in tonight's service and tonight's message. But let me just say first and foremost that 2020 has been a crazy year. I know many of us have been talking about it. Many of us have been saying, man, I didn't expect 2020 to be this way, turn out this way. We're six months into the year and it just seems time and time again, things are getting worse or crazier or just more intense. But this is why it's so important for us as believers and Christ followers to be anchored in Christ. Because although things may change in this world, Jesus Christ never changes. He is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And he will provide the grace for us to endure and endure well while we're here on earth as long as we remain anchored in him. And on top of that, there's great things that he wants to do in and through our life, but we can only accomplish those very things if we're not anchored in the world, but anchored in our solid foundation in our relationship with Jesus Christ. It's a powerful thing, and I'm so excited to be able to share uh, God's word tonight. So let's start things off with some prayer. Lord, we thank you so much that you've been so faithful and so good. And even though we may not see the goodness and faithfulness in the world, God, we know your word says that you are. So Lord, we pray that you will still us where we are, that you would quiet our spirit, that you would quiet the noise around us. And tonight we can worship and glorify you and honor you because you deserve all the praise. God, I know that your word is going to speak to every single one of us and may it give us perspective on how important it is for us to be anchored In your son, Jesus Christ, in your name we pray, amen. You know, we're going to start things off with point one in your notes, and it says this, we will experience trials in life because our world has fallen. You know, over the last couple months, over the last few weeks, I think many of us have been angry. Many of us have been frustrated. Many of us have been upset because, again, this year, so many things have been beyond our control. We've seen the unraveling of this pandemic, which brought a worldwide stop to everything and anything that we could have put our lives on or build our lives upon. School stopped, work stopped, being able to work out stopped. Our everyday life changed in an instant. And if that wasn't enough, where we see the fear of getting sick and losing our lives because of COVID-19, we then see on the tail end of that, this uprising of brutality and violence and racism and prejudice. And I don't know about you, but I was frustrated. Sometimes today, I'm still frustrated. I don't understand why, the, why things happen the way that they do, left on my own understanding. But that's why time and time and time again, I need to recenter my heart and my life on God's word. And God's word reminds us that the brokenness, the depravity, all of the different things that we see and witness that frustrate us, the root of all of that is not God. God is not a God of chaos or turmoil or destruction or pain or anger or disunity. The God that we love and serve and glorify is a good God. And the reason why we see what we see is because our world is fallen. The root of all of the things that make us angry is sin. It is sin. In Romans 5, 12, it says this, Therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man and death through sin, and so death spread to all men because all sinned. In Genesis, we know that Adam ate the fruit. He disobeyed God. And because of that very moment, sin 
entered the world. And when we look back at the things that have hurt us most or the things that we see in the world that we know hurt others the most, it's because of sin. The root of all evil is sin. And this is a time and place where we see the effects of sin in our life. Like, I don't know about you, but I just wrote some things down and how I felt over the last few weeks. I felt angry. I felt uncertainty. I felt imbalance and fear and anxiety and anger and violence. And aren't we all seeing those very things in our world today? Moments and situations that cause us to feel and get emotional and get angry. But again, I need to remind myself, and I think all of us need to remind ourselves that we can't see the lens of the brokenness in the world from the world's eyes and the world's perspective. We need to see everything that's happening through God's perspective, through his lens, through his word, through Jesus Christ. And we're going to be talking about that tonight, why it's important to be anchored in Jesus so that we can continue onward in our life and do all of the great things in and through our life that Jesus wants us to do. Because remember, he's a good God, which means he has good things that he wants his sons and daughters to experience and also share while we are here on earth. We can be the change. We can be the light. We can see reconciliation and healing all across this world. But the answer is Jesus. And perhaps maybe some of us are feeling this way right now when it comes to what we're anchored in. I got some Jenga pieces, Jenga stack, and it's already starting to wobble. And uh, I don't know if you guys have ever played Jenga, but what makes Jenga so fun and so exciting is actually the very ending of the game. It's not the beginning when the foundation is solid. What creates the most anxiety and worry and fear is actually when it's like this, when the foundation of the Jenga has been affected. I know this is a game, so we can say that Jenga is fun, but life sometimes isn't fun. The things that we see around the world sometimes isn't fun right now. Right now, we see the brokenness of the world. And we see the foundation sometimes of our own lives being rocked because it's one thing after another thing after one thing after another thing. And all of a sudden, we begin to feel our life shaking. We fe- begin to feel the foundation of confidence and hope and peace that comes through Christ disappear because our foundation has shifted from Jesus Christ to the things of this world. And I don't know if some of us right now feel... Like it would just take one more block, one more thing, one more moment in our present day history to happen for our lives to completely fall apart. This is not Jesus' plan for us. This is not what he's called us to experience or feel day to day, hour to hour, minute to minute, second by second. This is not his plans and purposes for us. Well, my question for all of us and myself included is is our foundation built on Christ who is a solid foundation or is it built on the things of this world which we've seen firsthand in 2020 can be shaky, can be rocky, can leave us feeling imbalanced and uncertain because again, sin breaks relationship with God and also breaks relationship with people. It causes the very essence of who God has called us to be to no longer have foundation, which is why tonight it's so important for us to be talking about the importance of being anchored in God's word and in Jesus Christ and living a life that has him not just a part of it, but the foundation of it. Jesus Christ is everything. He is the answer to this world and the brokenness that we see, the problems that we see. It's Jesus Christ. And that's the hope that I hope all of us can come out of today. Yes, the world is crazy. Yes, it's going to be hard sometimes. But guess what? Jesus Christ overcame this world and through our relationship with him and the grace that he's given us, we will overcome as well. And we will live a great legacy here on earth. John 16, this is Jesus speaking to his disciples. He says this, 
I have said these things to you that in me, you may have peace. In the world, you will have tribulation, but take heart. I have overcome the world. As we journey into tonight's message, my encouragement for all of us is to hold on because God is good. In fact, I know some of us are watching on YouTube. Some of us are watching on Facebook. Maybe some of us are on Instagram Live. Can you do me a favor and in the comment section, can you post, hold on because God is good. Take some time to do that because we need to be reminded of that. Sometimes we need to tell ourselves that over and over and over. My God is good. Everything is going to be okay. I am going to overcome because Christ overcame this world. And I can only say this to all of us tonight because I've personally experienced that myself. I've had to look at everything happening this year and I've had to re-examine my priorities. I've had to re-examine my, re-examine my foundations. I've had to re-examine even my walk with God because everything changed in 2020. But sometimes God allows things to change so that we're reminded that he doesn't, that his foundation remains the same, that he is our rock, that he overcame the world. Everything is going to be okay. But like what we all posted tonight, we just need to hold on. Hold on to God. Hold on to his promises. Number two in your note says this. We must build our life on Jesus Christ our rock and our foundation. I'm going to read us a passage in the book of Matthew. And we're going to see two kinds of people. And we're going to see what it looks like to have no foundation in Christ or what Jesus says when you don't have a foundation in him. And then we're going to look at what it says when we do have a foundation in Jesus. Matthew 7, 24 to 27. Remember, this is God's word to his disciples, which means this is God's word for every single one of us today. And if you're not a believer yet, or you don't believe in Christ yet, that's okay. Let God's word speak to you and at least give you hope for tomorrow. Amen? Let's read. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them, will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand and the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat against that house and it fell and great was the fall of it. Again, foundation without Christ, Jesus says, when the storms come, we'll get rocked. We live in a fallen world, so we will get rocked. But a foundation without Jesus Christ is like a Jenga piece on the very tail end. One more block until we crumble, until we fall. But again, that's if we put our foundation in the things of this world because Christ will never let our lives look like that. Jesus has so much more in us and through us to leave us like this. This is not his plans. We're going to continue on with Matthew and we will see God's plans for his people when storms and trials and tribulations come our way. Everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock and the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house. But it did not fall because it had been founded on the rock. And who is the rock that Jesus Christ is talking about? He's talking about himself. Remember, he already told his disciples that in this world, you will face tribulation. This is the same thing happening 2,000 years ago that we're witnessing present day right now. Jesus' words to his disciples that they would face hardship was the same then, and it's actually the same now because we're experiencing that firsthand. But... If the hardships are the same then and they're the same now, that means the answer to the hardships then are the same now. It's about building our life on the rock, Jesus Christ. And this isn't some kind of like, I know of God kind of thing. I know of Jesus. He's cool. When we say relationship with God, When we say building your rock or your life on the rock that is Jesus Christ, it means an intimate relationship with him. It means that you're diving into your word or his word, your Bibles. It means that you're engaging with conversation with him in your word or in prayer. 
It's saying, God, like, here's all of my emotions. Here's all of my frustrations. Here's all of the things that I'm feeling right now. God, this is how I'm feeling. And you knowing of God, or if God knew of you but didn't care about you, he wouldn't speak to you back. He wouldn't engage with you back. But after being a Christian and a Christ follower for 15 years, every time I've sought God in my word or in prayer, because God is a loving God and a caring God, and he's been in pursuit of us from the very beginning because he sent his son Jesus for us. We know that he cares. He know that, we know that he is concerned about the things on our heart. But again, we need to be able to allow God's word to give us the proper filters and perspective on how we see everything that's happening. We can't just feel how we want to feel and act how we want to act if we have a relationship with God during these kinds of times. God's word has to be the compass that we follow every day. His heartbeat has to be how we react and respond to the things that we see. And most importantly, the way that he sees the world, the way that he sees others, the way that he sees us is the lens that we have to see everything that's happening around us. We can't be grounded in our emotions because our emotions will fail us. But if we're grounded again in God's word, he will never fail. He is a rock. And I know I'm repeating myself over and over, but this repetition is important because we're constantly hearing noise and things that tells us that our faith is inactive or our faith can't work or God doesn't exist or where's God in all of this or why is God allowing all of this to happen? Our emotions can take us so far from God, but moments like this should lead us to the foot of the cross, to Jesus's heart, where we can spend time with our Father and simply ask, God, change my heart so that I can change this world, not through the lens of emotions and feelings or circumstances or situations, but I can change the world through your word, through one life, just how you changed my life with your word that you gave me. Everything's going to be okay, but our foundation has to be in Christ. Philippians 4, 11 to 13 says this, now that I am speaking of being in need, not that I am speaking of being in need, for I've learned in whatever situation I am to be content. I know how to be brought low and I know how to abound. And in any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. I can do all things through him who gives me strength. Jesus gives us strength. When things are great, when things are not, when we're on a high or when we're on a low, when the world is stable or when the world is unstable, when we're feeling stable or when we're feeling unstable, what does God's word say? What is the apostle Paul speaking? He's speaking truth to every single one of us. I can do all things. Everyone say all things. All things through Christ who gives me strength. And this is why God's word, Jesus Christ, has to be our rock, has to be our foundation in this time. We've uh, re-put back the pieces of the Jenga and we've kind of put the solid foundation on the bottom. This is what allows the Jenga pieces to remain straight and upright right before you begin to play the game. And again, God's word, there's life without the foundation of Christ. And that's just messy because when the storms and the trials and the tribulations come, everything falls apart. But again, with Christ as our solid foundation and our rock, we can go through circumstance. We can go through situation. We can feel the wind of the world coming our way. But because our foundation is in Christ, instead of feeling like we're always one block away from everything falling apart, we are reminded that God has us intact. And we can remain upright. We can remain confident. We can remain secure. And we can know without a doubt that everything is going to be okay. And we can filter the things that we see, the things that we witness, the things that go on in this world with the proper lens of God. 
I can do all things through him who gives me strength. You know, one of the things that I've realized in this time is there's a lot of things that would want to take our focus away from God. You know, obviously there's the news. Obviously there's the reality of the things that are going on in this world. But one of those things that I know is just like, just sucking the hope in every single one of us. And I know, I don't want to sound like I'm hating on social media, but social media, you know, the things that you see on your feeds, that is not the word of God. It's sometimes really good things, sometimes very encouraging things. And I'm not saying that we need to stop being on social media, but I've also noticed that the lens of what we see on social media oftentimes is the lens and the compass of things of this world. And sometimes we wonder why after viewing social media, we get so angry or we get so frustrated or we get so emotional and sad. And all of a sudden we, we feel like everything's out of whack again. And again, a lot of times it's because social media is so dark. And then it, what we put into our hearts then goes into our soul and it just changes our perspective on everything. You know, um, about a week ago with the unraveling of the news regarding George Floyd, um, first of all, I remember feeling so disgusted and just so angry and so upset. And I re began seeing all of these things on, on social media. I began posting some things on social media as well, but I realized like I had to personally put a pause on that because the emotions and feelings that I was having was actually creating my world to be imbalanced, to be uncertain, to feel anxious and angry. So I began to stop, but my wife, Chantel, didn't. And, you know, we kind of joke around about it. And, you know, I told her, hey, babe, you need to turn that off. You need to stop looking at your Instagram. You need to stop looking on Twitter. You need to stop reading all of your news updates because her consonants would go from joyful and hopeful so broken and hurting. And there was this one night we were laying in bed right before we were go to, going to sleep and she was scrolling through Instagram. And like, we were just joking about something like maybe just a couple minutes ago. And then in an instant, she turns to me and she just, she's crying. She's crying and she's crying and she's crying. And I was like, what, what happened? What, what's the matter? And she couldn't even speak, but the tears began to well up in her eyes. And I began to ask, what's wrong? What's happening? And she was just, she just said these words to me and I, I remember it so vividly. She just said, why is the world the way that it is? Why are people so mean? And again, it was because what she was viewing and seeing on social media was just, was heartbreaking. And again, going into this whole thing about having to reprioritize and refocus our foundation on Christ, that was actually a real life moment where both of us had to repent first and foremost of, of our emotions and feelings that weren't of God, but then God, get God's word in us and remind us that, man, we need to turn off our social media apps and we need to open the word of God. You know, we, we realized we needed to stop complaining about all of the things that were going wrong in the world and actually begin praying to God and asking him to make everything right. I remember I had to come to a place where I had to stop pointing my fingers at people or people groups that we wanted to cast blame on. And I realized I need to take personal ownership. We need to take personal ownership of the gift that we've been given, the salvation of our Lord, of Jesus Christ, and the opportunity to share God's love with people around us. That's what we're called to do in times like this. That is the commission that Jesus Christ gave his church to be a light in moments of darkness. But if all we're getting into us is the darkness of the world, how can we be God's light? Chantel and I needed to get God's word in us, the foundation of God's word so that we could properly see everything that was happening in the world. And you know what's so amazing about God's word is we realize that Jesus Christ himself was always for unity and reconciliation, that he was always for justice and righteousness, that he was always for all people, all men, all women of all nations. And that's not some made up thing. That's not my guesstimate. That's not my, my, my thought or whatever. It's God's word. It's his truth. And we know that because God's word says that he made all men created in his image 
It says that all men have fallen and have sinned as we looked at earlier, but it also says that Jesus Christ came to save all. He came to save the world. He came to save all of us. And then the commission that Jesus Christ gave was that his disciples and his believers would make disciples of all nations. I don't know about you, but that fires me up. That gets me stoked and excited to be a Christ follower in this time. Because when the world says and when sin says, when Satan says that we're supposed to divide and be angry and be frustrated, God's word says the absolute opposite. And you know that righteousness in us, you know that holy anger in us that's like, man, that's not right. I need to do something about it. I need to change the world. You know what that comes from? That comes from Jesus Christ. The righteousness of God is revealing himself to this generation and this moment in time in history to people all across this world because yes, we want to make a difference. But that difference can only come from sharing the gospel and the solid foundation of Jesus Christ with the world around us because that's the answer. It's not just this. It's not just that. It's not just racism, just prejudice, just violence, just aggression. Jesus wants to abolish sin all of it. And the answer to all of it is Jesus Christ. And it's not the answer for some, it's the answer for all. So again, my encouragement for all of us is what are we doing? I'm sorry for being super passionate. This is the first time I had an opportunity to speak on our online services. So I'm just giving it my best because this is a moment in time we all need to do our best for God. We all need to give our best to God because he cares about all people. And you know, when we are living for God's plans and purposes, when we are living out his word, when we are abiding in him, that in itself is what we can remain confident, secure, solid foundation that we can make a difference in this world. Number three in your notes says this, by the grace of God, we are able to overcome, share his love and do his will. Why is it important for God's church to remain anchored and grounded in our solid foundation and rock in Jesus Christ? It's not just so that we can become better. It's not just so that we can have peace. It's not so that we can make our lives what we want it to be while we're here on earth. That's not the point of us having Jesus and a relationship with him. The point of us having a relationship with Christ is so that we can be a light to the world, that we can share God's love with people around us. And most importantly, while we're here on earth, God already has good works that he's prepared in advance for all of us to do. But again, that's us having to take personal ownership of the gift of life and salvation that God has given us and then do something about it. And we can't just have like an agenda, We can't have our agenda fueled by politics or emotions or whatever the case is, what we see on social media. The kind of agenda that we all need to have is God's agenda to seek and save that which is lost and bring reconciliation to this world. So what kind of spirit does God's people, are God's people supposed to have in moments of hardship and trial? Romans 8, 37, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. When we know who Christ is and we're founded on him, man, we conquer, we overcome, we push through. It may not be easy, but we know that the end of our lives here only means that we get to experience heaven and eternity with God forever. And it says in God's word that heaven is amazing, that it's beautiful, that it's everything that this world had intended, that God had intended it for be. We'll receive that when we go to heaven. But that doesn't mean that we take a blind eye either to what's happening in this world. It does mean that we're called to make a difference in this world. But again, what is our difference being fueled by? Is it just the things of this world or is it God's word and his calling for us to be a light and make disciples of all nations? Philippians 2.13 says this, For it is God who works in you, both to will and to work for his good pleasure. You know, when we do good things for God, it pleases him. You know, every good thing that you do in response of how good has God has been to you for others, it pleases God. And wouldn't the world be a better place if every person knew how much God loved them? And that kind of transforming love was the love that we shared with 
with people around us. Man, this world would be so amazing. It would be so great, so grand. But again, I'm not trying to discourage us what our world is not. But we have an opportunity to be the change and make what our world can be through Jesus Christ and through the good works that he's placed in us. And oftentimes it just starts with one moment, one moment in time in history where we take a stand for what's righteous and what's good and we share that same love with others around us. And tonight, we have the honor of sharing an amazing testimony of a woman in history that changed the world, that changed our nation because she took a stand for what she believed in believed in and it was rooted in her faith in Jesus Christ and her name is Rosa Parks. Back in the 1950s, 1960s, there was a lot of racial division, so much so that it affected how people did their everyday life on buses. Black people had to sit in the back and white people had to sit in the front. If a black person was sitting in the front, they had to move to the back if a white person came on and needed room. That was the reality of what was going on in that time. And Rosa Parks had a moment where she was just unwilling. She was unwilling to give up her seat anymore. And because of that, she was arrested in 1955. And what that did was it set off all of these different peaceful protests of people talking about that injustice and about racial segregation and injustice. And what that ended up doing was the Supreme Court decided that racial segregation was unconstitutional. And because of that moment, things changed overnight. In an instant, in the darkest time, someone was able to share God's love and God's light by taking a stand. And we saw everything change because of that. When asked about that time, this is what she says. She says, I have learned over the years that not knowing what must be done does away with fear. When I sat down on the bus that day, I had no idea history was being made. I was only thinking of getting home, but I had made up in my mind. After so many years of being a victim of mistreatment, my people suffered not giving up my seat and whatever I had to face afterwards was not important. I did not feel any fear sitting there. I felt the Lord would give me the strength to endure whatever I had to face. It was time for someone to stand up or in my case, sit down. So I refused to move. And later on, when quoted about what was the reason for her doing that, she says this, people always said that I didn't give up my seat because I was tired, but that isn't true. No, the only tired I was, was tired of giving in. You know, again, when we live in a time when the world says to live a certain way or be a certain way or to give in, we have the opportunity to be grounded in God's word because again, Rosa Parks was a Christian. She was a believer. And when we remain in God's word, when he is our foundation, we can do great things in and through our life. There are great things right now that God is putting on your heart to do. And a lot of times, like Rosa Parks, it's a very simple thing of standing up for what's right. And one thing that I wanna encourage all of us to do in this time is to love God. Every single one of us needs to love God. Every single one of us needs to receive his love. And every single one of us can share God's love with others around us. Because guess what? In our lifetime, over the 50, 60, 70, 80 years that we know God and we live on this earth, if we do that, love God, love others, we will see great things happen in and through our life, just like Rosa Parks, that not just changes a moment in time, but a whole lifetime. And I know some of us are like, man, that was then and things are still messed up now. Again, the world has fallen. But when God breathes hope in us, we can do great and mighty things. Amen. The final scripture I want to give us tonight as we bring things to a close is Philippians 3, 12 to 14. If any of us right here are wondering if we can keep on going, if we can continue on, if we can go onward in this kind of season or in this kind of time, maybe we do feel right now that we're still on that last building block or jingle block before everything crumbles down. This is God's word that I want to leave for every single one of us. It says this, not that I have already obtained this or I'm already perfect, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but one thing I do know, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. 
I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. See, when you have Jesus as your foundation, you know that after all of this is said and done, we are going to enter the gates of heaven and everything is going to be good. But how we live on this earth still matters. What we do with our life still matters. Yes, eternity is coming, but God has called us to do great things right here, right now, in this moment of time and in this moment of history. My question for all of us is, we are, are we allowing God to speak to us through his word, through our time praying for him? Because if we do, if we can silence all of the noise around us, he will tell us what we're called to do. He will tell us the person that we need to pray for. He will tell us the good deed that would bless someone in their moment of struggle and trial. He would give us the wisdom and the discernment to make every moment count for his glory while we're here on earth. But again, our foundation and our anchor, in order to do all of that, has to be in Jesus Christ. It has to be in Jesus Christ. I know we're going to get through this season. I know that we're going to overcome. I know that God is going to provide the grace for us to go onward. But I also know that things are still going to happen. Things are still going to unravel. Trials are going to still come our way. But if we truly are the people that God has called us to be, we can remain. We can stand strong. And we can glorify God and be a blessing and a light to this world as long as he's our anchor and our foundation. Can we pray? Lord Jesus, God, we lift up this time. We lift up what many of us are feeling like the darkest time in our lives, in what we see, in what we witness, in what we experience. And maybe at times we feel like this world is just one Jenga block away from falling apart. But God, we thank you that your word says that you hold the world in your hands. And you are, Jesus Christ, our rock. You are our solid foundation. And you, Lord Jesus, have called us to make a difference while we're here on earth. And because you are our solid foundation, we can move forward into places of uncertainty and still bring your light and bring your love to people around us. God, we know that there are so many people in this world who are hurting and broken that are in a place where they feel like they're ready to give up or give in. But God, I pray that we would rise up in faith and just use every opportunity that we're given to be a blessing to those around us. Because we know, we know that it just takes one moment where we rise up and we know that we can change the world or if we can change one life, all of that is good. All of that is great because you've destined us to do good things while we're here on earth. God, I pray that your church would arise in this time, but we would arise not out of the the lens of our emotions or feelings or the things that this world is telling us, but we would arise grounded and anchored and solid on your word. And we would truly be the church that you've called us to be straining forward every single day, knowing that heaven is coming, but there's good works that we can do right now today. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, we all said, amen. You know, one thing or one quote that I want to leave us uh, with tonight is this, and I think this is a great way for us to kind of have perspective. What can we do tomorrow? What can we do after all of this is said and done? So we can have a conversation. Martin Luther King Jr. said this, when it comes to divide, when it comes to disunity, when it comes to things that bring separation or segregation, this is what he says. People fail to get along because they fear each other. They fear each other because they don't know each other. They don't know each other because they have not communicated with each other. There is so much power in a moment of conversation. And again, my encouragement for all of us is that God's word would be the foundation and we would go out tomorrow and have kingdom, gospel, Christ-centered conversations as we are loving and caring and being a light to the people around us. I'm gonna do it. I know we all can do it. And as we do that, we're gonna make this world a better place in Christ and through Christ.